Hello, this is a part 2 of 3 on why light novels are bad, how it brings bad effects to the anime industry. If you have not watched the first part, then click the annotation here to go watch it first. In this video, we will be discussing more on the industry side, why light novel authors don't improve, and what specifically am I talking about when I say that this is the cause of the anime industry hurting. Now, let's not waste time and just dive straight in, shall we? Now that we know why light novels are bad, the next question became, why don't they improve? The recruitment system of the contest and web novels are flawed, but once one becomes professional, then they should eventually improve, right? No. For one thing, light novel authors are freelancers. They are not official employees of the publishers and their relationship with them are on a by-project basis. This means, in the case of contests, they don't have to continue working for the publisher if they want. They literally can just take the prize money and walk away, never to write another book again. And even in the case they do sign on for our series, if their novel sold poorly, then it is possible for the publisher to tell the author to end it. Otherwise, since you're not officially part of them, they can never fire you. This means you can always come back to write mediocre or, let's be honest, a rehash of the same story over and over just to get your paycheck. And as long as the industry standard is what it is, well, the publisher can also just continue this forever. And seriously, most of these people would just rather quit than write something better. This here is a chart showing how many writers actually continue writing after their debut. Below 46% is the industry standard. Over half the author who debut will quit before 5 years. And do you know that this is out of the people who have already passed the contest system? Even Dengeki Bunko, the biggest light novel company with the biggest marketing power, cannot keep 40% of its author to continue writing. Because contests, with its obsession with wrapping things up in a single book, and web novels, with its forced clickbait strategy, never prepared them to write high quality work consistently under a pressure of a deadline. It is why you see some light novel startups have had a good premise and unique identity at first, only to lose that and become dependent on old cliches either from Volume 2 or creating the next title. Exactly because they never had anything else planned ahead. Light novel companies, outside of a few such as Zingeki, tend to have less advertising power compared to manga companies. So while the same can also be said to manga to a lesser degree, it is why most light novel never had any sort of marketing push from the company up until it managed to get an anime adaptation. This is another reason why light novel companies tend to rely on more on quantity over quality tactics. They don't want to put all their eggs into a single basket and promote the hell out of it, because since light novels, no matter how bad, can never lose money. Because of this, they also see no need to force a change on the writers. Even being the contest winning book doesn't guarantee quality. After all, there's like 20 companies, all with their own annual contest. One company even have goddamn quarterly contest. Imagine if every film studio also has its own newcomer award. Do you really think that would be a reliable method of judging quality? In contrary to that, most currently successful light novels a long-term plan. That is what I feel is the important point of a serialized story. That the story needs to be progressively better and better as it goes on. If the first volume is an 8, the second volume should be an 8.5, the third be a 9, and so on. As you continue, you need to get them to care more, not less. That's what made it worth it when you follow the same stories for years. That's what made One Piece the number one Japanese fiction. For the sake of comparison, imagine if you are recruiting someone to run a triathlon. The contest system would be like selecting people by having them run 100 meters dash, then disqualify anyone who trains for stamina rather than sprint. Then for the web novel, it's like selecting people who could run a marathon, but still never bother testing their ability for cycling or swimming. So in the end, how do you expect any of them to do good in the actual race? I have inquired with almost every light novel publisher about this issue, and while most of them are utterly unable to deny that the current method clearly is not working, they also are unable or refuse to answer why they aren't changing the strategy. If I am to gather a possibility, 
It is because the order to change would have to come from the higher-ups, who doesn't actually mingle with the actual products and is therefore largely ignorant of its contents and even sales. It is the lower-level employees who are in touch with these things. But thanks to the tyrannical Japanese workplace hierarchy, no one is allowed to pretend they know better than their superior on how to improve company performance. It's just a common thing that happens in Japanese companies of about any fields. It is the reason why Japanese companies are famous for still sticking to antiquated system which overwork and overstress its workers, sometimes to death and suicide, yet still has 30% less productivity per person than countries like Germany or France. Two countries at work, on average, 200 hours less per year. Long story short, Japan constantly binds itself in bureaucracy but can never explain why. Another baffling fact you may notice is that Tokyo actually has four colleges with dedicated departments to teaching writing light novels taught by accomplished writers. But as you can probably assess, it doesn't actually help much. I have gone and tried a one-day trial course in four of these colleges myself. From what I have heard from the senseis themselves, only 3% of its students won a contest during their time at school, only 10% would ever go to win a contest at all, and about only 15% would remain in the writing industry in some capacity after 5 years. I hate to say this, considering some of the senseis were actually genuinely nice people who provided me with these honest information, not only on the school itself, but also on the professional side of the industry. But I can't help but feel that a lot of their courses also is unhelpful. At least for someone who actually wants to be a great writer that stood above the crowd. One of them taught that to make your own story, all you have to do is take someone else's story, like say, Momotaro, substitute the characters with your own OCs, twist some of the plot threads and you're dandy. While I understand that this is just a claim to make the process of story crafting seem accessible that you too can become a writer, I think we all know why this is not a good advice in this day and age. Another sensei just outright said that his course is meant to maximize the chance of you winning the contest, that he's not actually teaching how to be successful in a writing career. That the structure is rigid, that you must follow a formula and not have a cast bigger than 7 characters and that the ending of the first volume is the most important thing. The build up and the climax, whatever. That regardless of what ideas you have, straying from this winning formula will only hurt your chance of winning the contest. That if you want to write something unique, you do it later. This is the exact problem of preparing the student for the exam but not for the actual career. To teach things that will only be useful on the exam day and you can just forget the moment you step out of the test room. Sure, these may just be a trial so the real course would certainly be more in-depth, though with the success rate being what it is, I can't help but feel skeptical. Instead of teaching the students to think outside of the box, it felt more like they want you to shut yourself in that box and reinforce as well as if you're trying to turn it into a nuclear bunker. It is why so many authors look at the cliches and instead of thinking it is something to avoid, they think it's mandatory. So now to the part you actually care the most about. How does all affect the anime industry? Yes, you could simply chalk it up and say, who cares if they're bad if they're still making money? If they want to stick with the box so much, just let them. Well, thing is, when light novels are bad, it is the anime industry that hurts, not the light novel industry. Light novels themselves require very little collaborating manpower to make. There's the author, the editor, the illustrator, and that's about it. That's why fundamentally, it's just going to be very, very, very hard for any light novel to sell so bad it lost the company money. Remember, they're freelancers. They don't have any solid ties to the company. 
Ergo, nothing to push them to improve as long as the paycheck comes. Modern light novels are basically going through the same phase as pulp magazines in the West during the early to mid 1900s. Everyone knows they're bad, lucrative, run of the mill, exploitative, but as long as the writers can pump these things out with a quantity or quality mentality, they can go on publishing these things despite the fact they don't make a lot of money. Let's look at these graphs. These are the screenshots I have taken from six company homepage catalogs of their novels. Everything colored in red is Isekai, everything colored in yellow is Harem. Full pictures are in the description if you want to check them out closer. And these are just by looking from the title and description. I am not counting those that didn't outright advertise their red and yellow. And the ironic part is that many of these companies also ask in their contest recruitment page that they want people with unique ideas. So you see now, like novel companies aren't actually interested in innovation. They know oversaturation is a problem and is willing to state it, but doesn't actually care enough to take any measures to fix it, because there just aren't any actual financial penalties for not doing so. But the problem is when these novels are adapted to anime, when over 100 people will have to be forced to work on this project. You may have heard of it before, but for those who didn't know, a third of seasonal animes actually flopped. Most others barely make back enough money just to keep the lights on. More than half of anime studios are perpetually in the red and thanks to that, one or two anime studios shut down every year. On top of that, anime industry is also notorious for having horrible working conditions on top of the already terrible Japanese work culture. Animators in particular are known for inhumane work hours and getting paid per hour less than a high school student working part-time at McDonald's. Anime isn't an industry you go in trying to make money. It's one you go in because you genuinely love it. But when the industry is poor and abusive, it is these bottom ring workers who will have to take the biggest hit. The common cause people often cited for the anime industry current struggle and the reason it is so monotonous is because there are too many animes and anime studios. There are currently over 40 new animes coming out every single season. And that's only counting the new ones, not counting the extra dozen or so that continue its run from the previous season. That is why the amount of industry workers, particularly the talented and experienced ones are spread really really thin, and more often than not in many series, you can spot more Korean and Vietnamese names in the animator credits than Japanese names. Anime advertises itself as the industry of dreams, but the truth is it is the industry of crushing dreams. The reason most of these animes flop are because they are forgettable, they're replaceable. They're the goddamn same, so when one finishes airing, there's a bunch more like it to come that in the end, none of them being able to establish their own space in pop culture, unable to gain loyal fans, and isn't worth recommending to anyone. And that's on top of already being niche. While indeed Japan has a higher acceptance of anime than any other place in the world, well, everyone can openly say that they love One Piece or Kimetsu no Yaiba or Kimi no Nava. There is still a big wall between those general audiences and your usual harem, edgy, and BLs. Those animes generally target otaku whales, since they are the people who are easier to lure while having looser wallets. On the surface, picking these people just look like easy mode. But then the whales are themselves not only limited in numbers, but also with limited spending power, especially in this day and age where there's a million other things seeking to drain your money. Which is why ultimately, trying to aim for them just means that the anime just ended up cannibalizing each other. Personally, I feel like these stories are more of a self-destruct button than easy mode. These stories shut out the general public. So it shuts out 99% of the population from ever being able to enjoy them in the first place. Then these stories also tend to lean very heavily on appeasing either the male or female demographic exclusively. Which means you're 
cutting that already thin sliver of potential audience in half again. So, you cannot blame basic supply and demand for the state anime is in. The success of smart anime is in mangas show that there certainly is a high demand for smarter stories. Yet the light novel's publisher saw no need to push its author into that direction and staunchly defend its ineffective system that discourages smart stories. They are basically pressing the self-destruct button over and over while claiming that this is the safest route. But the studios, they don't actually have a way around it. You see, coming up with an original story takes time, which means if you take a year in between each project to write an original story, everyone in your studio is going to starve and the whole operation is gonna go under. Which is why you don't really have a choice but to adapt someone else's story. But the more popular the story, the price to their copyright would also naturally be higher. Which is why smaller to medium studios have no choice but to on top of paying its employees in peanuts, buy stories with cheap licenses, i.e. obscure light novels and hope you make enough money just to keep the lights on. So this cycle is damaging to the anime industry, but to the light novels, it's a party. Having an anime adaptation means that on top of the anime studio paying them to use their story, the anime also is an advertisement to the books. To like novel publishers, getting an anime adaptation is the milestone of success for that novel because, I repeat, light novels would otherwise just flat out not get any marketing push at all. An anime adaptation signifies the peak of glory for that novel. And it doesn't even matter if that anime failed. Again, the one that loses money in this deal is the anime company, who has their hands tied either way. In summation, Light Novel refused to change their quantity over quality business model for absolutely no reason, even though change will certainly bring growth to them. Yet they leash it off the anime industry, an industry that decidedly cannot survive on quantity or quality business model and is already torturing its workers, who already chose to sacrifice financial stability to work in this field they love but and end up just creating repetitive products that would be forgotten in three months. See why I'm saying we need to change the light novel industry now? Outside of the business side, light novels and animes heavily leaning into the otaku demographic are also often the ones perpetuating the bad stereotypes for animes and its fans. I repeat, in Japan, anime is more acceptable, but at the same time, it's also not as respected. Exactly because anime aren't particularly projecting a respectable image themselves. Isekai, harem, ecchi, they all draw the image that anime fans are shallow, that all they care about are pleasing themselves. And note, I am not against sexy character design or sexual interactions in animes. If you can have a sexy character and situation but with an actual substantial story then good, that's all good. But the problem are the ones that rely 100% on edgy, clickbait strategy to manipulate its impulsive customer base who, more often than not, won't be loyal either way. Sex appeal is cheap. It's easy come, easy go, like clickbait. You can get the audience's attention easily, but their attention span will also only last as long as their bulky. All of this and I mean, how are you supposed to build up a respectable image? These like Null and their anime adaptations very much earn and deserve their bad reputation. The problem is, no one is trying to fix it. Additionally, I would also argue that light like novels also contribute to the decrease of 24 or 52 episode animes and leading to more 12 episode cores. That is because for the studio, a shorter core means less risk. How well an anime does can often be decided within the first 5 episodes. If an anime ran beyond that point and still can't pick up traction, then signing on for a double core would only mean wasting more manpower and money into making something that's already a failure. This is why I'm saying, long term planning is important. Unlike mangas which will often get axed as soon as your plan runs out, like novels, even when selling so badly the company wants to end it, 
will often still be given enough chance to get to volume 4. Which means, no matter what, light novels will always have enough content to be adapted into a 12 episode anime. So there you go. Another reason why light novels can go without any consequences, while anime studios suffer. You may have heard that the solution to the anime industry crisis is to simply have less animes. Less studios so that more people, more talents can focus on working on a fewer animes in a less pressuring environment. But of course that also means that each individual anime would also have to make more money for the sake of feeding more mouths of the people working on it. Which is why you just as often hear that it would lead to a self-destructive cycle, as it means the studios would have to choose to make isekai, harem edgy titles, where they can pretend to act like they're minimizing the risk, even though now we know at this point they're not. Studios should not be focusing on what they think sells right now and then, but what can continue to sell for years to come. Stories that will form a long time bond with the audience, stories that will remain a topic of discussion years after it ended, that people would want to recommend to their friends who just got into anime, stories that will help expand the reaches of the anime medium, not narrow it down, stories that can appeal to both genders, stories that can help improve the reputation of anime and animation as a whole, not taint them. As much of an easy money as they are, shallow stories are not a worthwhile investment does not help the anime medium grow, does not garner respect, and again the worst part, are often forgotten as soon as they're done airing. Which is why I believe it is important that we have to change this from the root level up. Change what is a standard bar of anime source material. And for now, that is to do something to improve the standard quality of light novels. It's easy to say, just support the studios you like and they will stand by you, but that doesn't help solve the problem of animators living on slave wage, and it certainly also doesn't stop the studios from just taking that money you handed them and just dumped it into the next mediocre or terrible project in the combination of the wise words of Thanos. The hardest choices require the strongest wills. And... Fine. If you want change, pouring fuel into the machine isn't going to help. It's going to keep the machine alive, sure, but it doesn't change anything. If you want change and no one's going to do it, then be the change you want to see in the world. I am one who is attempting to do just that, exactly for the sake of saving the anime industry which I love. I am currently writing over 20 stories which I believe can help the anime industry, though as you may have guessed, the light novel context not only is totally unsuitable to me personally as a writer, but being a gaijin just add an extra layer of trouble on top of that even though I can and do speak and write Japanese just fine. So if you are interested in hearing more of my story, please click here to the next video explaining my experience against the contest system or click here to the change.org page where you can read and sign the petition if you wish to support my case. Alternatively, I am also considering self-publishing, in which case in the description you can find a link to my Patreon account where the money you generously donated will be turned to the publishing and distribution of my books. Click here to go to my video pitching metafiction, the first story I wish to self-publish. As the name implies, it is a story focusing on meta-commentary on anime and fiction as a whole, together with exploring the theme of escapism and rejection of reality, and how it can be both for bad and for good. And stay tuned for a whole bunch of other stories I will be pitching every other week, so if you don't know if I am good enough to be worth your support, then you can check it out for yourself. Or if you think you want to start a writer career and join me in our efforts to save the industry, but you don't have an idea to start on just yet, then click on this playlist where I will be giving away premise ideas for free. After the third video on this series, idea videos will be coming out every other week, interchanging with my personal pitch videos. Join our Discord server in the description. Or if you're just interested in whatever else content I have to offer, Please subscribe and support the channel. 
share this video to any of your friends who might also be interested and thank you for watching